Good morning, Crimson Way. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's shout some praise to the Most High God. Hallelujah. Let us give him glory this morning, for he is worthy to be praised. Glory. I love being in the house of the Lord because there is deliverance in this place. There is freedom in this place. There is peace in this place. Lord God, let us stand and worship him.
are always yes and amen, right? Yes. And he will never let us down. Yeah. Uh, I want to read a psalm. It's actually Psalm 63. As I was preparing, it was one of those weeks where I felt like an exile several times. That's a rough week, but always putting my faith and my worries on my Lord. And so King David understood that when he was actually became an exile in the Judean wilderness. And it actually reads, Oh God of my life, I'm lovesick for you in this worry wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longings to love you more, with cravings in my heart that can't be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, my God. I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. Wow. Isn't that, that awesome? For your tender mercies mean more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, God. Daily I, I will worship you passionately and with all my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I overflow with praise when I come before you, for the anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. You are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. I lie awake each night thinking of you and reflecting of how you help me like a father. I sing through the night under your splendor shadow, offering up to you my songs of delight and joy. With passion I pursue and cling to you, because I feel your grip on my life. I keep my soul close to your heart. Those who plot to destroy me shall descend into the darkness of hell. They will be consumed by their own evil and become nothing more than dust under our feet. These liars will be silenced forever. But with the anointing of a king, I will dance and rejoice, along with all his lovers who trust in him. Let's continue to worship and invite the Holy Spirit here this morning. Amen. Forever, you 
morning. We believe in you, God. We trust in you, Jesus. You are worthy, Father. You are our maker. You created us, Lord. You know everything about us. How could we not trust in you? You are a source of life. We cannot go through this life without him. We cannot do anything without him. We cannot even breathe without Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus.
Who are you wanting me to minister to? Who am I to be Jesus with skin on today? How am I to be the only Bible that somebody else ever sees? Because all we need is God. We don't need nothing else. We don't need anybody else. We don't need any other things. We don't need to run to the next car for identity. We don't need to have all those things on social media. We don't need to run to this girl. We don't need to run to this guy. We don't need to run to sex. We don't need to run to porn. We don't need to run in that assurement from anybody else because God has already been more than enough. You're here right now and it's because of God. You're here because he put more breath in your lungs. Because all you need is him. Everything you're ever going to need is going to be rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. Let's sing that back again.
Jesus, our strength and our Savior, our Redeemer and our way maker. Doesn't matter what the doctors say. We know a higher power this morning.
He is the ultimate physician. in your heart. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. I dare you to trust him with your life. joy unspeakable and peace hallelujah which is not a pond but like a river that goes on and on and on and surpasses all understanding hallelujah his love covers a multitude of sins
somebody is in here today and you have a wall up. You're afraid to let go. You're afraid that if you let God closer that he's going to flip something in your life. Take your guard down. I understand we can have our guard up with other people, but if you put your wall up in front of God, he's not going to move. It's like an open hand and a closed hand. If you approach God with a closed hand, not only can he not fill it, but he can't take anything away either. But if you just open that hand up, God is free to not only take what he wants to take, but he's also free to give you the things that you've been longing for, the breakthrough, the miracle, whatever it is. Take your wall down today. As we go a little bit further, as we press into God a little bit more, you can be guarded with the world, but don't be guarded with God because he's the only one that is not only everything you'll ever need, but will give you everything that you'll ever need. That's the God that we serve. You could put that face on here, but God sees it. God sees your heart. He sees your heart. And some of you, he's almost been begging, just let me in. Just open the door and let me in. Yeah, I might flip some things, but I'm going to move in a mighty awesome way that you didn't think was possible. Because you were putting limitations on a limitless God. Don't limit him. Don't limit his love. Don't limit his mercy. Don't limit his grace. Don't limit his forgiveness. That's from east to west. That's way further than you can fathom. Yes. Take that wall down. Let God take those chains off of you. In Jesus' name, let him take those chains off of you. Can you just sing the chorus one more time, please? Oh, come to
some of you sat down, I'm going to ask you to stand back up. Give somebody a high five, fist bump, handshake, give them a hug, bring some dabs in. Let them know that you're happy to see them today. Uh, we've got lots of things that are going on here, and we have lots of things that are happening at our other campus. And so we just want to highlight a couple of these things. So uh, if you're visiting today, thank you so much for being here. I'm Pastor Shane. I'm the campus pastor here at Miller Park uh, Crimson Way. So I'm um, just going to highlight some of these. So when you came in, you may or may not have grabbed a bulletin. Uh, they are there if you would like to grab a bulletin. And if you're a note taker, uh, the, that, that open space on the back. But we've got lots of things that are going on here. So right now, uh, we have homework help that is happening on Tuesdays here. So if you have children or you know of people who have children and they would love some extra help, some tutoring for homework, you can contact Jessica. She's our executive director of our community center and she's amazing. Okay, so she can get you connected and we can get something set up where you can get some help here for your homework, for your studies, for an exam, whatever it is. We offer that and it's free. So that's 100% off. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay, we also have music classes uh, that are also going on. Okay, and our music classes, they're learning how to play the keyboard uh, and guitar. I think they're just in keyboard right now, but those are on Thursday nights. And that info is also in your bulletin. And on Mondays, we have some awesome art classes that are going on. It's for adults and it's for kids. So no matter your age, you can get plugged in and show off some of that creativity artistically. So uh, we have those things. Now at our other campus, we've got a couple things uh, that are going on there that we don't have going on right now here. So we have our Growing Kids God's Way that started on February 21st. This is happening on Wednesday night. So Growing Kids God's Way, it's just a way to maybe help you in parenting and become the parent that God wants you to be. And really just instill some of those biblical principles into our parenting. Because so oftentimes we get caught up in parenting and maybe the way that we were parented, which might not necessarily be very godly. And so uh, it's... They call it, it's an excellent course on reaching the heart of your child with a God-centered purpose. And so that's really good. That's happening at our Elm Grove campus on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Um, our Crimson Kids Ministry, if you'd love to volunteer uh, downstairs and upstairs, uh, please let one of us know in leadership. We have our young adults that meet every month at the other campus. Uh, the Lazarus Youth Group for grades 6 through 12 is happening at the other uh, campus. I'm the youth pastor there in addition to being campus pastor here. So I wear lots of hats without wearing hats. So that works out good. Friday nights, we have our Crimson College of Ministry. Now, if you're like, I just want to grow. I just want to know God more. I just want to get connected. I want to know his word. I want to know the promises that he has for me. I want to know the teachings. And I just want to rendezvous through this life in the way that God is calling me to. Well, if that's you, uh, that's the courses are then free. Again, that's 100% off. You don't have to pay for anything. You'd have to buy your book, but that's it. But it's Crimson College of Ministry, and so get plugged in. Now, if you're like, you know what? I feel like God is calling me into ministry, and you'd like to go towards accreditation and licensure, then it's a, it's a, it's a small fee. It's 50 bucks a month. The classes meet every Friday, and then when the month is over, a new course starts. So no matter who you are, that could be for you if you'd like to do that. And you can contact one of us if you're interested in any of those things. On March 17th, uh, if you're a lady, um, so ladies, make sure that you grab one of these if you haven't when you leave. We have our Empower Women's event uh, that's going to be going on. That's Saturday, March 17th. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 12. Um, I could bore you by reading this to you. Uh, but I'd much rather you just grab one of these and check it out and, and maybe God will press into you and be like, hey, you know what, this is where I want you to be. So uh, check that out. That's going to be a really good time and you're going to see some familiar faces and meet some other people as well. Um, so with that being said, I don't think I've missed anything else. Um, but I just want to re repeat that I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, God is good, isn't he? Amen. You feel him in here today? Yeah. Just something special about being in the presence of God and, and feeling him move and, and sometimes feeling those chains just get broken off. Feeling those walls get destroyed where we didn't have to go around the walls of Jericho and, and chanting stuff out six, seven times. Uh, he just breaks them. And it's a beautiful thing. So, moving into our next part of our service, uh, we're just going to do our tithe and offering. And so, if you're visiting for the first time, or you're not, you're not obligated to give. 
But if God is pressing in your heart to give in any way, shape, or form, I want you to know um, that God is going to use that. And he's going to multiply that. Uh, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the community around us. We're trying to be Jesus with skin on. We're trying to engage all cultures. We're trying to bridge every gap. We want to be that face. We don't want to be Jesus. We want to be the people who can usher them into the presence of Jesus. Um, whether that's through homework help, whether that's the classes that we have here, um, and whether that's just getting into the community and chopping it up with people. And so if you do call this home, I ask that you would prayerfully consider a tithing and making that covenant with God um, and watch God do some amazing things with that. Um, so let's just pray over the offering. Father God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you that you give us these gifts and you ask us to steward them well. God, you give us 100% and you're just asking for 10 and we can keep the other 90 and do whatever we want with it. But God, we thank you for the gifts that we have because we know that every good gift comes from you above. And you say, test me on these things and see that I won't open the floodgates of heaven. Now, that does not mean that you're going to make us rich. Maybe you're going to bless some other aspects of our lives. So, God, we approach you with open hands. Take what you want to take. Give what you want to give. We trust you because you're a good, good father. Regardless of what our parents have been like on this earth, we know that you, God, you are perfect in all of your ways. So God, be with us in this time, God. Whether it's a penny, whether it's a dollar that goes in that basket, God, we know that you will take and you will use that to feed the multitudes. Feed them spiritually. Feed them physically, emotionally, and mentally. People are broken. People are hurting. We know the only answer is you. So God, we ask that you take what we have and do with it whatever you want. God, we love you and we trust you and we praise you. Jesus' name, bless this offering. Amen.
for this, um, but I do, I'm excited for today, um, because the man of God who's preaching today uh, is an incredible man of God. Pastor Bob, can you come up here? Yes. Um, I just, I want to announce this. Not only did I want to introduce uh, all of you to him and him to all of you, uh, not only because he's an incredible man of God, uh, but also because he's agreed to preach here once a month, and so I'm super excited about that. Yes. Uh, he's incredible. Um, and so I just, my prayer is that your heart will be open to receive the word that God is going to speak through him today. So I'm just going to pray over Pastor Bob uh, as this is an exciting time for us here as God is moving and transitioning what's happening here out. So uh, if you could just extend a hand to Pastor Bob, that'd be great. Father God, we just thank you for today. God, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my friend. Uh, God, he's an incredible man of God and he has so much to offer. And what he has to offer is all of himself, his ambitions, his dreams, his goals. They've always been to serve you. And so, God, I thank you that he's agreed to spend time with us, to speak to us what you have been speaking to him. So, God, I just pray that no heart today that leaves here would be unchanged, that would be unmoved. God, whether it's restoration, whether it's conviction, or whether it's just peace. God, we just pray that you would not only show up like you have, but show up. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can I tell you what a privilege and an honor it is for me to be here? I love God, and I love what God's doing. And I love what God's doing here. Amen. amen. I am ever grateful for the team of people that God's put together, and I'm ever grateful for the people that God's bringing here. And I just want to encourage you, if you have found this to be your home, I encourage you to invite other people. Amen? That's Reality is how it grows, as we're faithful to do what we're supposed to do, then God will move 
in us and through us. I love Jesus. Okay, can I, can I just begin with that? I just love the Lord, and I love His Word, and I love people. And there are people that are here today because they love Him, but there are people in our lives that are not here that love Him but have been hurt and have been wounded. And many times they've been hurt and wounded by people of God. They've been wounded by people in church. And I personally want to see that never happen anymore. Can I just say enough is enough? enough, is enough. We need to be men and women of God that are so in love with Jesus that Jesus emanates out of us and that people are drawn to him because of our relationship with the Lord. You know, the Spirit of God moved in a mighty way through 12 individuals that Jesus called. You know, we're sitting here today because 12 people were faithful to hear the call of Jesus and go and be his disciples. Now, at first, they were a little hesitant to do what God had called them to do, right? He told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He told them that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes on you. And then you go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. They heard very clearly from the voice of Jesus himself, and they knew exactly what they were supposed to do. But what did they do? They gathered together in Jerusalem and stayed in Jerusalem until the spirit of the living God started to stir things up and caused them to move out. And the reason they moved out was because persecution was starting to come. How many of you want to wait until persecution causes you to go and do what God's called you to do. That's not a real good plan, is it? The best case scenario is that we hear what God's telling us to do, and then we go and do it. Have you found that that works best? You know, I'm a person that likes to talk to God, and sometimes I've had the tendency to argue with God. Anybody like that here? <laughs> You know what he's wanting you to do, and then you say, yeah, God, I get it, but it'll require me to do this, and it'll require me to do that, and it'll ask me to do this, and I'll have to do that, and, but I want to do that, God. I want to see your glory. I want to be used by you, but I'm kind of comfortable where I am. I really don't want to do what you're asking me to do, but I want to see your glory. You know, the reality is we're never going to see his glory, and we're never going to experience God in his fullness until we learn to just be obedient. Now, how many of you are familiar with churches in the New Testament? Okay, the Spirit of God moved in a mighty way, right, in the New Testament? And in, in, uh, Rome, and Ephesus, and Thessalonica, and Ephesus. Spirit of God moved in a mighty way. And we think, oh Lord, if only we could have the movement of, the, of your Spirit in our church, in our city, the way you moved then. <laughs> you ever really looked at the churches in the New Testament? Can I tell you there were a lot of challenges? In fact, believers in the first century could have invented the term dysfunctional. You ever heard of the word dysfunctional? Look around. <laughs> there are a bunch of dysfunctional people here, right? Has anybody here got it all together? <laughs> My brother-in-law Paul does. So, Paul, would you just come up here? I'm going to let you just take over because I certainly do not have it all together. The early churches experienced racial, ethnic strife. They experienced sensuality and immorality among members. They experienced doctrinal divisions and heresy taught by charismatic personalities. Boy, that sounds a lot like the current church, doesn't it? Early churches also had difficulty assimilating new members into the body of Christ. Conflict among church leaders occurred on a regular basis. In many ways, things haven't changed in 2,000 years, have they? We still have the politics of men working in churches. You know, everybody says, well, you know, I want to be the leader. I want to do this, and I want to do that. 
Can I assure you that being a leader in the body of Christ is not grand and glorious? Would you agree with that? You know what being a leader in the body of Christ means? Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up. There's no way for us to elbow our way into the kingdom of God. You know, God says, his word says, he resists the proud. Let me ask you. I don't know about you, but I've experienced God's resistance. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great that the preacher today is giving you all of his uh, difficulties and faults? But the reality is all, all of us struggle in various areas in our life, don't we? Yes. But God resists the proud. However, the flip side of that, he gives grace to the humble. I encourage you, if you want to be used by God, just humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Let him lift you up. Now, but the other thing is about in the new church, the early church, God moved in a mighty way. So all, in spite of all the dysfunction and in spite of all the division and the strife, the Spirit of God in His mercy still moved. That's good news today, isn't it? How many of you want to see the Spirit of God move in a mighty way in your life, in your church, in your community, Amen. in your family? Amen. You know what the secret is? Us just doing what we're supposed to do. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? Amen. Oh, but God, I gave to the church. Or God, I went to church and I did this and I did that. Aren't I a great Christian? Yeah, but what are you doing with your relationship with me, God's asking? What, are you allowing me to have my way in your life? Are you allowing me to go through and shift and sift things in your life? To bring you to the place where you can hear and understand my voice. Should we not expect God to transform those who are enslaved to immorality, addicted to drugs, or enmeshed in difficult relationships? Or does God only work in the lives of good people who just need a little tweaking? The Spirit of God has been sent for all. Not our standard of all, but for all. You know, too many times we look at people and we grade them. Okay, this person is okay with me. This person, I think, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to stay away from them. You know, the Spirit of God is drawing all people to Him. The Spirit of God is on the move, and He's wanting to do a mighty work. And as Pastor Shane said many times this morning... We're called to be Jesus' skin. I mean, Jesus in us. Going into the world, going into the community, going into schools, going into a workplace, going into the marketplace. Wherever we go, people's lives should be changed because we're bringing light into darkness. Many churches are not doing what they're supposed to do. And unfortunately, they don't have a church culture that encourages intentional efforts to bring the lost to Christ. Can I say we need to be intentional? We don't pray and then ask, okay, God, you send your Holy Spirit and you go do the work and then I'll reap the benefits. It's not how it works, is it? His Holy Spirit will go before you. His Holy Spirit will soften people's hearts. His Holy Spirit will speak to them so that when you come and you're led by the Spirit of God and you speak what God's put on your heart, then things will happen. See, there's a shared responsibility. Amen? Amen. Do you really realize that? It's a shared responsibility. The Holy Spirit is faithful to do exactly what He said He will do. And he's calling out to us, will you hear my voice and will you respond to me? Will you let me have my way in your life so that I can bring about change in your family's life? So I can bring about change in your church life. So I can bring about change wherever you go. See, my heart, my heart cry is, here am I, God, send me. Now I say that and sometimes I really mean it. And other times, God, won't you just send Miguel? Okay, God, I think really Miguel is the one that's called to do that. Or how about Sean? You, Sean, back there, God. He's the one that you're supposed to use. 
Well, God does want to use Sean. God does want to use Miguel. But he also wants to use you. And the Spirit of God is working in your life in such a way that he's demonstrated himself strong to you. Amen? Amen. Has God not shown himself to be faithful to you? Amen. Amen. Has God not shown that he loves you with a steadfast, unmovable love and he just is lavishing your love, his love upon you? Doesn't that, isn't that enough just to motivate you to do what God's called you to do? I can tell you, I was in a pit before, and God took me up out of the pit, placed my feet upon a solid foundation, and he began to change me and mold me and make me into something new. How many of you are sitting here today because you've been molded and changed and you you're, have been made new? But can I tell you something else? The good news is God's not done yet. He's still at work, and he's wanting to work in our lives and change us and mold us. If you have your Bibles, if you look to Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered. Isn't it funny that the religious people were the ones doing the muttering? When they, in fact, should have been the ones that were going along beside Jesus, learning from him, and then going and, and doing exactly what he's Go doing. Ahead. He says, they were muttering, why? This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. <gasps> Isn't that a terrible thing to be said about you? You actually took time to go and spend time with someone that's not on fire for Jesus. Do you know that's a horrible thing to do? You know, don't you know that when you get saved, you're supposed to just group together with other like-minded people and just stay there because, oh, Lord, the, the world is evil and, and it's dark and I don't want to be tainted by it. No, not at all. See, he sent us to be light in the world. Yes, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of it. But what else does it say? It says we're supposed to be in the world. God has a calling on each one of your lives to reach people wherever you are. Your workplace, your neighborhood, your families. God wants to use you. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus was making a place for them at his table and encouraging them to stay and eat with him. Luke used this word receive six other times in his writing, and every time it means eagerly await or expect and look for. This is Jesus' heart. He was eagerly awaiting. He was eagerly expecting, and he was eagerly looking for people that needed a Savior. Now, when I talk about going and ministering to people, I'm not talking about having notches on your belt and, you know, well, how many people have you won to the Lord? And how many people have you won to the Lord? And how many people have you won to the Lord? It's not about building your kingdom and building your reputation. It's about building the kingdom of God. Preach. It's about bringing people to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we need to let people see Jesus, not our churches, not our religion. Not all that other nonsense. We need to have people see Jesus. Amen. Religion kills. Can I tell you? I'm not a religious person. I hate religion. Why? Religion is a bunch of do's and don'ts and, and jumping through this hoop and jumping through this hoop and walking this way and talking this way and looking this way and all sorts of other things that have nothing to do with having personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is eagerly awaiting. In other chapters, in other words, in Luke 5, 15, 2, it says that Jesus is not just receiving sinners. He's looking for them and eagerly, eagerly awaiting their coming. He has his eye out for them. Can I say to you that we need to go and do likewise? We need to be opening our hearts and saying, God, 
I know I have to go to work today, or God, I know I have to take the baby to the babysitter, or God, I know I have to go to school, and God, you know the things I have to do, but Father, I ask you to help me to be aware of what's happening around me, and help me to be sensitive to Holy Spirit, so, so that God, if you're wanting to use me to minister to someone, wherever it is, God, help me to be willing. <clears throat> have you ever been in a grocery store and just uh, felt like, hmm, something's going on? And you go up to them and just say hi. Something going on. I just sense in my spirit something's going on. You know, God can have church wherever you are. Amen. Where two or more gather together in his name, there he is. Where? In the midst. You don't have to bring people to church to get them ministered to. You be the church going to them and minister to them wherever they are. He has his eye out for them. The word receive sounds passive, but Jesus is not passive. He's seeking sinners and tax gatherers to come to him and eat with him. He's receiving, in verse 3 and 7, he's receiving sinners like a shepherd who founds a lost sheep and celebrates with all of his friends. In 8 and 10 of Luke 15, it's he's receiving sinners like a woman who found a lost coin, coin and celebrates with all her friends. Both answered, Jesus leaves no doubt about what he means. In verse 7 and 10, he tells the Pharisees that the lost sheep, the lost coin, represent lost sinners. Do we have people in our lives that are lost? And when I say lost, I don't mean people that aren't going to church. I mean people that have never met Jesus. I mean people that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. It's not about church. It's about relationship with Jesus. And then if you come to that place where you have a relationship with Jesus, then your heart's desire is that I will go to church because there's ministry and there's worship. How many of you loved worship this morning? I personally loved worship. I was worshiping God. I was weeping today in the presence of God. This is where you need to be to be able to experience God during worship. And then, you know what? You can have that same experience in your home. I'm thankful that uh, we can have different worship music playing in our house and we can walk around with our hands lifted up and worship him. You know, you can worship church outside of church. Wow, that's an amazing thing to say, right? But, you know, Spirit of God wants you to give him honor and give him glory and give him worship. In verse 6 of Luke 15, it says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which is lost. Verse 9, it says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I have lost. In verse 24, it says, This son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and have been found, and they began to be merry. I love this. A lost and found sheep and a party. A lost and found coin and a party. A lost and found son and a party. You know, there's great joy in the presence of the angels at one sinner that comes to repentance. Amen. There's great joy. I want to encourage you to be used by God and let him have his way in your life so that you can bring people to Jesus. Yes. You know, I heard a statement this last week that said that loneliness is a greater killer than obesity or even cigarettes. I heard that statement, but I'm not a person that just hears statements and just says, oh, that's interesting, and go on my merry way. I looked it up. Do you know, loneliness is killing people all over our community. Loneliness is killing people all over the world. At the same time, I was reading, and I read this statement, and this shocked me. It says, one day in 1995, Cook County officials buried 60 bodies in Homewood Memorial Gardens just outside of Chicago. Who were they? People who have nobody that knows or cares. They just die. Someone finds them on the street or in, street or in a park or in an alley or in a lonely tenement. The officials search for relatives. The medical examiner's office waits and holds the body. No one comes forward to claim the body. A 180-foot-long trench, trench is dug at the cemetery, and the wooden boxes are lined up next to each other and buried. No stone, no marker, 
This happens every month with 20 to 30 unclaimed people in Chicago. When I read that, what hit me was the lostness of so many people in our society. Lost from virtually everybody. Surrounded by millions in Chicago and not a single person seems to know or care when they die. This feels like absolute lostness, but it's not. Absolute lostness is when we're cut off from God. Do you know the worst thing that happens to people when you die if you don't know Jesus? It's not fire and brimstone. It's not sulfur and, uh, and great pain and agony. You know what the very worst thing to a person when they die without Jesus? It's being eternally separated from the presence of Almighty God. That's absolute lostness. It's better to die unknown by every human in Chicago or Milwaukee or wherever you are than to die unknown by God. It grieves my heart that 68 forgotten people were buried in a mass grave in Homewood, Illinois. How much more should we feel the hurt and the pain and the prospect of people around us that are dying without God? Luke 15 is about the love of God coming in the cities and suburbs of our world to find lost sons and daughters. It's about the identity of Jesus Christ and the meaning of his mission in the world then and now. And what part are we supposed to play in winning the lost? You know, for too long, people have focused on building monuments, building big churches and, and building this and building that. You know, and, and God's okay with us building churches because it's kind of nice to have a place to where we can come in out of the cold and we can have heat and we can have water and we can have amenities to, to protect people. But he's more interested in building his kingdom one by one and reaching people that are lost and don't know Jesus. Do you know that we have a part to play? We have a part. You have a part. I have a part. <laughs> I just want to give you a couple of things that God's calling us to do. And I want you to know they're very easy. They're very easy. It's just we need to hear it and then we need to do something about it. How about pray for the unchurched? Now, how many times have you heard someone to tell you to pray and you say, Oh, that's not anything. That's not much. I want something greater. Do you know one of your greatest ministries that God's called us to do is pray and intercede for people? Because yes. when you pray and intercede, the Spirit of God hears your voice and He hears your cry and His Spirit moves on your behalf. Amen. How many of you are here today because somebody in your family prayed for you? Look around you. There are a lot of people that people prayed for you into the body of Christ. When God asks us to pray... That's a heavy-duty ministry. And it's a ministry that we need to be serious about. And it's a ministry that we need to be doing on a regular basis. In Luke 19, 41 and 42, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it's hidden from your eyes. You know the little G... God of this world has set about blinding men's hearts and their minds so that they cannot know and understand the things of God and they cannot even respond to the Father. But God wants you to be a part of the movement of the Spirit of God and crying out and interceding and praying for people in your life and praying for you people that you don't know. Can I tell you, when I go down the street and I see someone by themselves, I just start to pray for them. I have no idea what it's going to do, but I, God moves me in my heart just to intercede and pray for them. God, I don't know what what's going on in their life right now, but God, I just ask you, if they don't know you, I ask you to bring them into personal relationship. God, if they know you and they're struggling in their relationship, I ask you to just to do a work in their life and bring them to the place where they can hear your voice and be, begin to understand who you are and what you have for them. 
See, none of us has any idea many times as to what our effect and the effect that we're having on other people in our lives. But you know what? It's not our responsibility. It's not my, my responsibility to go and find that person and tell them, Hey, I prayed for you a month ago. What did God do in your life? No, my responsibility is to pray for them. And that opens up the door so the Holy Spirit can move in a mighty way. And so the Holy Spirit can have the freedom and liberty to be able to do something in their life. Pray for the unchurched. How about commit to develop relationships with the unchurched? You know, that would be blasphemy if I said that in a lot of religious churches. Oh no, you don't want to go and spend time in fellowship with the unbeliever. No, that's precisely what Jesus did. If you don't believe me, go back and look in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You see exactly who Jesus was. You see exactly who Jesus went after. Can I remind you, he didn't go after the religious people to draw them in. Actually, the interesting to me is that, yes, he did go after the religious people, but not in the way that you would expect. He called the religious people, you brood of vipers, you whitewashed sepulchers. He went hard after the religious people because they had head knowledge, but they didn't have heart knowledge. Amen. See, the Spirit of God is wanting us to have heart knowledge and head knowledge so that we act upon what He's calling us and asking us to do. Can I ask you, before inviting the unchurched to church, just to start to develop a relationship with them? Just start to get to know people. Just have a heart for people. Amen? Let Jesus be Jesus in your life. Can I ask you just to go out of your way and start to pray and start to ask God to put people on your heart and ask Him, Lord, are there people in my life that you want me to minister life to? God, are there people in my life that need you? And the answer is 100% yes. Well, then God, help me to be sensitive to them and help me to be willing to go and do what you've called me to do. You know, people will find it very difficult sometimes to walk into a church. But they'll find it easier to walk into your home or come into your backyard for a barbecue, or meet you at a restaurant to just sit down and talk. And when, I, when you go and do that, can I encourage you not to give them the 12 spiritual laws and start hitting them over the head with the Bible and, and, and telling them, you need to turn and burn. But can you say, can you just tell me about yourself? I just want to get to know you. What's going on in your life? Are there struggles? Do you have things that are difficult? And let them know you're not the answer man, you're not the answer woman, but you know who has the answers, right? Does anybody here know who has the answers? Amen. Jesus has the answers. And if we'll just make way for Jesus to have an opportunity to speak to them through you <coughs> and me, then we can see the world around us changed. I want to see people come to Jesus. I'm not so interested in people coming to church. I'm interested in people coming to Jesus. And then if they come to Jesus, then, and then the natural outcome is that will, they will want to be around their brothers and sisters in Christ. And they will want to be able to worship God. And they will want to hear the word. But the goal is not to build this church or build the church in the world. It's to build the kingdom of God. Amen. See? One of the main things that we're doing here is to have a community center. Is to be able to reach out to the felt needs of, pe felt needs of people in the community. So that they can know we're not just hunting for them so that they can come put their money in the plate. We're hunting for them because we know that they're lost without Jesus. Why? Because we were totally lost without Jesus. We found the answer. God's calling us to be a bridge. God's calling us to be a gate. God's calling us to be a fence to keep people from going over the edge of going into hell. 
Do you know as long as there's breath in people's life in your family, there's hope. Amen. As long as there's breath in your in people that you're working with or, or, or people in the grocery store, wherever they are, you are, there's hope. Yes. God's dependent upon us. Let me encourage you to look for ways to minister. Are there people, are there people in your neighborhood that need help in their house? Are there people in their neighbor, your neighborhood that need help in mowing their grass? Are there people in your neighborhood that need help in, in snow shoveling or snow plowing or whatever the case may be? Looking out for ways to minister life to people and, and, and let them know it's not, well, we just started a church, I want you to come to my church. No, I just love people. I love God, and because I love God, I love people, and because I love people, I just am moved with compassion. See, Jesus, one of the things that motivated him was compassion. He saw the people that were lost, and he was moved with compassion. He had a heart's desire to reach people. Can I ask you to allow the Spirit of God to work in your life so that you're moved with compassion? So that it's not about you and getting yours. It's about you and your relationship with Christ. And being used by God. To see the kingdom of God advance. Amen. Have you read the newspapers lately? Have you watched the news? Can you agree that there are many things that are happening that were prophesied that will happen in the end times? Wars and rumors of wars, famines, floods, earthquakes. There are all sorts of things taking place in the world that are going on right now that are bringing us that much closer to the end of this world as we know it. We need to be about our Father's business. Amen? We need to be on fire for Jesus. And we need to have a heart's desire to be used by God so that people can come into knowing and understanding who God is and what he has for us. We need to tell the unchurched, unchurched how Jesus makes a difference. Has Jesus made a difference in your life? Amen. Amen. I'd probably be dead today if I would have continued going the way that I was going without Jesus. But because of God's grace and mercy in my life and because of people praying for me and, and talking to me and sharing the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, my life has changed in amazing, unbelievable ways. God's faithful, but he wants us to be Jesus with skin on. Tell the unchurched how Jesus makes the difference. The unchurched want to know, does following Jesus make any difference in your life? Does the Bible have anything to say about my problems? Address the hot buttons of the unchurched. Provide learning opportunities outside the walls of the church to address these issues. If you're struggling, anybody here struggled? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'm just going to ask the question. If any of you struggle with alcoholism, if any of you have struggled with drug addiction, if you, any of you have struggled with any kind of thing in your life, and as you open up your heart and allow the Spirit of God to work in your life, has He changed you and brought you to the place where you've gotten the victory? See, Jesus changes our life, doesn't He? He has brought hope and life to the world, and He's asking us to be used by Him. He's asking us to just share our testimony. You know, people don't really care that you carry a big Bible. They don't really care that you have bumper stickers on your car. They don't really care that you have crosses around your neck and you go to church. They care about, I have needs in my life. I have things that are going on in my life. Is there anyone that will help me? Is there any hope in the world? And if you have experienced hope, and you have experienced peace, and you have, you have experienced change in your life, then you have the answer. And that answer is Jesus. Amen. Amen. That the answer is Jesus. Don't be stuck in your religious ways, but be willing to change. Don't be stuck in the traditions of your church, but be willing to change. Well, we've never done it this way, or we've never done it that way, so what? 
If the Spirit of God has put it in your heart to go out into the highways and byways, then you do exactly what God's called you to do. He wants us to be about our Father's business. He wants us to hear the cry, and He wants us to respond, and He wants us to just say yes. I want to challenge you today just to say yes. I want, you, I want to challenge you today to start praying about people in your life. And then I want to challenge you to not only pray, but be Jesus to them. <clears throat> Don't preach religion. Don't preach do's and don'ts. Don't preach man, but preach Jesus. Don't even preach at them. Share the love of God. Let people know your testimony. Do you know there are people that you work with and they're in your neighborhood and they see you as a Christian and they think you've got it all together? And that, you know, you, you just can't even uh, spend time with them because they're so distant. And they are having so many troubles and things going on in their life that they couldn't even bear to stand, spend time with you. Share your testimony with people. I mean, does anybody here have a testimony about how God came into your life and how God changed your life? If you'll just share that, if you'll share the hope that Jesus has for them, and if you'll just share, they, maybe they don't want to hear this just yet, but if they've known you before and they see you now, they've got to acknowledge that something's different in your life, right? And it's not just because you're really a nice person. And, and you just have all these, you just went to, and you read this book, and it made a difference in your life. No, tell them it's Jesus that made a difference in your life. Let them know it's Jesus. Let them know that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you. God, that your Holy Spirit has moved in our life. And God, that you're a faithful God. And Lord, you were faithful to bring us to the place where we heard your call. And God, that you gave us the courage to answer the call. And we're here today because of your grace and mercy. Father, just ask you to help us to have grace and mercy with people outside of our lives. Help us to be moved with compassion. Father, help us to have a heart for people that don't know Jesus. For no reason other than we just want them to experience who you are and what you have for them. God, help us to be Jesus with skin on. Use us, God. I ask you to convict us and convince us of, by your Holy Spirit that you've placed us where we are for a reason and for a purpose. And God, the fields are white for harvest. And God, you're saying, who will go for me? Who can I send? And Father, I ask you to help us to respond. Here I am, Lord, send me. Help us not to be afraid, but help us just to be faithful to do what you've called us to do. And God, as we are willing, help us to know you would even give us the words to speak. God, your Holy Spirit can give us words of knowledge words of prophecy. You can give us insight by your Holy Spirit to speak life to people so that they can know there is a live God who is wanting to have a relationship with them. Father, use us for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. are the king of our hearts. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would move in our hearts. That we would receive the word that went forth today from your servant. We thank you, God, for it.
for everything you've done for me and for everything you're going to do. Be with me today. Help me to be the man and woman that you've called me to be. Help me to be Jesus with skin on. Help me to be the change in this world. I may not be able to change the whole world, but I can change somebody's because of who you are, God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, you are free to worship. You are free to go. We'd love for you to stay. There's coffee and donuts. There's snacks. And there's fellowship. Talk to somebody you don't know. Love you guys. You're just missing. You guys are